Our lesson for our devotion tonight is from the New Testament, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Notice what it says about Jesus, our priest. Now, there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weakness. But the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. This is God's word. Dear friends in Jesus, there's one thing that just about every ancient culture throughout the whole world has in common. Do you know what it is? Sacrifices. Even with differences in language and time and location, just about every culture in the history of the world has in some way had priests who make sacrifices. I've been blessed to, to travel a bit around the world. I went to the, the, the Andes Mountains in Peru and saw ruins of the Incas. Do you know what they had in their ruins? Altars for making sacrifices. Got to go to the pyramids in Mexico. Did you know that the, the largest pyramids in the world are in Mexico? It's called Teotihuacan. Do you know why they built those pyramids? They can make sacrifices to their gods. They've gotten to go to, to Rome. And in Rome, you can see ancient ruins. They're 2,000 years old. And do you know what you find all over ancient Rome? Temples where their priests would make Sacrifices. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. Every ancient culture had some form of priests offering sacrifices. And you might ask, why? Why is it like that? Well, it's because God has put in every human heart a need. Do you know what that need is? It's the need to be right with God. God has put into every human heart a conscience. A conscience that makes us human beings feel guilty when we don't live up to God's demands. And so whether people consciously are thinking about it or not, every culture in the history of the world has been trying to get rid of their sins. And that need, that need for the forgiveness of sins is a need that God never wants people to forget about. You see, if we forget about our need for forgiveness, whom are we going to forget about? And forget about God. And so in the Old Testament, God created a system so that his people, the Israelites, would never forget about their need for forgiveness. And that system was the sacrifices. Every morning and every evening of every day, the priests, either at the tabernacle or later at the temple, needed to sacrifice a lamb. Every morning and every evening. Just imagine what that would have done for those Israelites. Every day when they woke up and they saw the sun, they could know right now a lamb is being sacrificed for my sins. Every evening when they crawled into bed, they could know right now a lamb is being sacrificed for my sins. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, sacrifice after sacrifice. And just think of how that would have kept in those Israelites' minds their need. Their need for a savior. When, when they went to church, you know what one of the first things they would see is? Blood. They went to the tabernacle or to the temple, one of the first things they would see is blood. Blood on the altar, blood on the ground. Sometimes the blood would actually be sprinkled on the people themselves. They would, they would smell blood. They'd smell death. They would smell sin. And when they saw all those sacrifices, do you know what God wanted those people to think? 
That should be me. That's what I deserve for my sins. There was no way that God's people could have forgotten their need for forgiveness. Especially when you hear about the Day of Atonement. There were all these daily sacrifices. Every morning and every evening a lamb was sacrificed. But there was this also this special day, the Day of Atonement. It took place every fall. People still talk about it today. It's even on calendars. Do you know what it's called today? Yom Kippur? Have you heard of that? That's the, the Day of Atonement in which God wanted His people in a special way to think about the need for atonement for their sins. And we heard about it. That was the day the high priest could go into the most holy place, but he couldn't just waltz in there, right? First he had to sacrifice a bull. Whom was that bull for? Himself. He had to sacrifice a bull for his own sins. And then he took a goat. And he sacrificed that. And who was the goat for? All the sins of the people. And then he took this scapegoat. Just really a remarkable thing that God commanded. And he put his hands on that goat. And by doing so, he put all of the sins of the people on that goat. And then they didn't kill it. They took it way out in the middle of the wilderness and they shoot it away. And what was that supposed to show? This is what we need, right? We need our sins to be taken as far away as possible and shoot even further away still. And when you hear all this, you ask yourself, why did God give all of these instructions to his people? He wanted them always to remember their need. Their need for forgiveness. Most people saw the smoke rising from the altar. They could think to themselves, that's what I deserve. I deserve death for my sins. When those people thought about that scapegoat, they could think to themselves, that's what I deserve. I deserve to be sent away from God. And are those things still true for us today? Absolutely. But even with all of these sacrifices and priests and all of these laws and commands, People back then realized that all of those priests and all of those sacrifices still weren't the solution to sin. In fact, this lesson that I read from Hebrews, the, the writer here gives three reasons why all those priests and all those sacrifices couldn't actually take sins away. First, he says, the high priest died. It's kind of a problem, isn't it? You got this high priest... And after a while, what always happened to every one of them? They died. There was constantly this need for more priests. Clearly that high priest wasn't the one who was really going to take all the sins away. They kept dying. Second, like we just talked about, for that high priest to enter God's presence, what did he need to do? Sacrifice for his own sins. Because those high priests, they weren't better than anybody else. Just like we pastors, we're not better than any other Christian they needed forgiveness for their own sins how could they save everybody else and third there was no end to those sacrifices every day day after day week after week there was always a need for more you could tell God was ingraining this in his people's minds look for something better look for something more so one day, John the Baptist saw Jesus walking by. And he pointed to Jesus and he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now after hearing all this about priests and sacrifices, do those words from John the Baptist mean a little bit more? In your mind, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then just three years later, Jesus made a big sacrifice. And in the middle of his sacrifice, Jesus cried out, It is finished. Where was he? He was on the cross. He was serving as our priest. Now, we today, we don't talk about priests a lot. Especially in the Lutheran church, you don't call your pastor a priest. We use the word pastor. We don't think a lot about priests. But Jesus being our priest is at the center of the Bible's message. In fact, we're told this. Jesus lives forever. He has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. All of the high priests kept dying. 
You know, Jesus died too. But he rose from the dead, and now he lives forever. Jesus is the one priest who lives forever, and that means that Jesus is the one priest who is able to save completely the people of God. Because Jesus didn't have to ever offer sacrifices for his own sin. This lesson says, such a priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He's never had to sacrifice for his own sins because he's holy as, holy as God is holy. He's pure and blameless, perfect on the outside and on the inside. He's separate from sinners. Now he's exalted above the heavens. Can you see how Jesus is better than all those other priests? Jesus offered more than any of those other priests could possibly offer, especially because Jesus offered a different sacrifice. (laughs) Not a bull or a goat or a lamb. What did Jesus offer? He offered himself. We heard he, he sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. What other priest ever did that? Offer himself? Never. Jesus sacrificed for our sins once and for all when he offered himself. This is why John the Baptist pointed to him and said, look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the one true priest who took away our sins once and for all by offering himself on the cross. Can you feel the relief? Can you feel the peace? God wants you to. Of course, we don't sacrifice animals at our church because Jesus did that once and for all for us. But just like people of all time, of all these other cultures I mentioned, just like them, We're always in our lives trying to find ways to get rid of our sins. We try to do good to others. What's usually our reason? So we feel good about ourselves. Right? We hide the things that we've done or said or thought because we sure don't want them to get out. People to know what they are. We criticize ourselves in our minds over and over again because we know all of those foolish things that we've done. What are we doing? Just like people of all time, we're always looking for ways to get rid of our sin. And you know what Jesus says to us? He says, you can stop all that. You can stop. I sacrificed myself for your sins once and for all. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he, he died for the sins of the world once for all. Do you know what that means? It means he died for your sins once and for all. So how many of your sins are left to be paid for? None of them. How many of your sins are still stuck to you, weighing you down? None of them. Jesus took your sins away once and for all and he didn't stop there. This lesson said he's he's the priest who lives forever because he's in heaven always interceding for us before our Father in heaven. Just think of what that means. If you were to wish for anything in the world, what could be better than to have Jesus in heaven talking to God the Father on your behalf every day? What could be better than that? How could God the Father possibly refuse what Jesus asked for when it's his own dear son? How could God the Father possibly not give you what's best for you when Jesus himself is interceding for you before the Father every single day? How could we still live with worry or anxiety or fear? We have high priest, Jesus, who paid for our sins once and for all and to this day as our priest is praying for us before God the Father. What's left for us to do? Well, just this. What's left for us to do is to live for Him. There's a verse in Galatians where the Apostle Paul says that uh, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. 
You think this is what life is all about. The life I live in the body, I live by faith. And the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, Jesus has paid the full debt of our sins. So what's left for us to do? Just to live for Jesus. Have you ever heard the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb? You know how that one goes? Right? It followed her to school one day. All that. And just this week, I, I had a thought. I've never had this thought before. But do you realize that that phrase, Mary Had a Little Lamb, is exactly what Christmas is all about? Not the part about going to school. Not actually the song at all. The song isn't about Jesus at all. But just that phrase, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Isn't that exactly what Christmas is all about? What happened on Christmas? Mary had a little lamb. A perfect, innocent lamb. A little lamb who on his own was willing to die for the sins of the world. A perfect little lamb who made himself the final, ultimate sacrifice so that no other payment for sin is needed with you see the baby in the manger. Remember this. Mary had a little lamb for me. Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And if he took away the sins of the world, whose sins did he take away? Mine. Jesus is our priest. Once and for all. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, from the beginning of time, you've placed on our hearts as human beings the desire to be right with you. As we look at cultures around the world, even as we look at our own lives, so much of our activity and our energy is poured into trying to make ourselves look good. It's poured into trying to hide or get rid of our sins. Lord, it's, it's exhausting to live with sin and guilt and fear. And so the Bible gives us this message that you are our perfect high priest, you're perfect because you live forever. You never die. You're perfect because you really are perfect. You're innocent. You didn't have to sacrifice for your own sins. You're perfect because you sacrificed yourself once and for all for us. When we see you as a baby in the manger, help us remember who you really are. You're the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world once and for all for us. Dear Lord Jesus, don't let us live our lives with guilt or fear. Don't let us live our lives trying to do what we can to hide or get rid of our sins. You've already done it for us. Instead, help us to live our lives for you. In your name we pray. Amen.